Hey folks, Dr. Lava here. Well, over the past few months, I've covered the cut content from Pokemon Generations 1 through 4, but for Generation 5, I'll be digging even deeper than I have previously, down to the very core of the generation in order to discover new information that we've never seen before here in the West. Like lost Pokemon designs revealed in previously untranslated Japanese interviews, and in the case of today's episode, a lost special event. This episode is just the first installment in a series of episodes focusing on the cut content of Pokemon Black and White. So if you like part one, you might consider subscribing so you can tune back in for the rest of the series. In this episode, I'll be providing an exhaustive explanation of a scrapped event centered around the Lock Capsule, a key item that was once meant to serve as a bridge between Pokemon's fourth and fifth generations. We'll be taking a look at how the event would have occurred if Game Freak hadn't changed their minds about its implementation. And at the end of the episode, I'll show you how you can actually experience this lost event for yourself. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dig right into everything there is to know about the Lock Capsule, including how to get one of your very own and how to open it. Pokemon Black and White versions contain a total of 94 technical machines, but hiding inside the game's internal data, there's actually a fully functional intergenerational trading sequence that can unlock a secret 95th technical machine. You might have noticed that on the top floor of the Game Freak building in Castilia City, there's a clown named Mr. Locke who claims that he can open anything, but curiously never gets a chance to open anything throughout the entire game. Well, if you go digging around in Heart Gold and Soul Silver's internal data, you'll find an unused sprite for a key item called the Lock Capsule, as well as a description that tells us that it can only be opened with a special key. Just like Platinum version's Azure Flute that I talked about in my Generation 4 episode, the developers at Game Freak originally intended to distribute the Lock Capsule at special events, but for some reason, they never ended up actually getting around to it. So what you're about to see is Game Freak's original plan for the intergenerational trading sequence and the acquisition of TM95. I should mention that everything I'm about to show you is accessible in the game's release versions. The only piece of the puzzle that's missing is the sequence's first step. In order to experience the intergenerational trading sequence as it was originally intended, you would have needed two Nintendo DS's, a copy of Heart Gold or Soul Silver, and a copy of Black or White version. The sequence's first step would have been a Nintendo Special Event, where lock capsules would have been distributed to copies of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. After receiving the lock capsule distribution to gain possession of it, you would have needed to pick it up from the mystery gift attendant at any Pokemart in Johto or Kanto. And then, switching over to your copy of Black or White version, you'd need to head over to the Game Freak building in Castilia City and talk to the scientist who asks you for a password in exchange for possession of a secret machine that he's invented called the Relocator. At no point in the game are you even given a hint as to what the password might be, so you would have had no choice but to look it up online or employ a strategy guide. Using the easy chat system, the password is Everyone Happy Simple Connection. Once he's been given the correct password, the scientist forks over the Relocator, a key item that allows for communication between Generation 4 and Generation 5. Next, you'd need to have Heart Gold or Soul Silver on one Nintendo DS and Black or White version on the other DS, with both of them reset to the game's menu screens. Using Generation 4's Mystery Gift system, in conjunction with Generation 5's Relocator, the Lock Capsule can be relocated from the Johto region to the Unova region. With the Lock Capsule now relocated to Generation 5, the intergenerational event's final step is to head back to the Game Freak building and talk to Mr. Lock. And now, Mr. Locke finally gets a chance to make use of his special key, which he uses to unlock the lock capsule and reward your efforts by handing over what's inside. First, he gives you the game's final technical machine, which is TM95 containing Snarl, a dark attack that deals 55 damage to all adjacent foes and has a 100% chance of lowering their special attack stats by one stage. It's worth noting that there's not a single Pokemon in black and white that can learn Snarl naturally. 
The only way that you could normally see Snarl is by receiving a special event Zoro Arc who already has it in his moveset. Second, the lock capsule also contains a letter from someone in the Johto region warning you not to let TM95 fall into the hands of Team Rocket. The letter is probably meant to be written by the character that you play as in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but Game Freak may have intended to market the event as if Professor Elm or some other NPC were the letter's author. But whoever it was that wrote the letter, it seems they didn't get the memo that Team Rocket was actually run out of Unova long ago. But forget about TM95 and the mysterious letter for a second, because the most fascinating information brought to light during the event is the revelation that Mr. Locke is actually a sad clown. And with Mr. Locke's character arc now finally brought to a satisfying conclusion, the Locke capsule event is finally complete. Okay, admittedly, your reward for completing such a complicated event isn't exactly mind-blowing, and that's probably why Game Freak changed their minds and ultimately decided not to distribute the Locke capsule. But for fans of Generation 5, the real reward isn't Snarl itself. It's the satisfaction of finally completing your TM collection, and even more importantly, knowing that you're part of a very small, exclusive group of hardcore Pokemon fans who have managed to experience the event and unlock the secret lock capsule. If you want to experience the Lock Capsule event for yourself, all you need is two Nintendo DS's, a game from Generation 4, and a game from Generation 5. Every step of the process is legitimately accessible in the game's release versions. It's only the first step, the actual acquisition of the Lock Capsule, where you'll need to bend the rules. The simplest method of obtaining a Lock Capsule is with an action replay, and I'll leave the required AR code in this video's description for you if that's your method of choice. But if you don't have an action replay, that's okay too, because in place of using a cheat, you can exploit a glitch instead. The glitch can be executed by logging on to an unofficial DNS Wi-Fi server with your Nintendo DS, which essentially tricks your game into receiving the Lost Special Event distribution. In fact, with this method, you can gain access to lots of Special Event distributions in both Generation 4 and Generation 5. But the server method is slightly more complicated than using an action replay, so I'll also be leaving a link in the description with up-to-date information on how you can log in to the server. I think it's worth noting that while conducting the research for this episode, I only came across three people that claimed to have completed the lock capsule event, and only one of them provided photographic evidence. So if I had to put a number on it, I'd estimate that probably less than 100 Pokemon fans have actually gotten a chance to unlock the lock capsule. And that's with black and white version having sold over 16 million copies. And in my opinion, the fact that so few Pokemon fans have experienced the event, and that most aren't even aware of its existence, is what makes the lock capsule such an interesting missing piece of Pokemon history. Okay, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more Pokemon Cut content, you might want to subscribe and maybe check out my past videos as well. If you've been following me for a while, you're probably aware that I've recently been publishing a series of Ken Sugimori interviews from 2011, in which he reveals beta Pokemon designs that went unused in black and white, interviews that were never translated into English until now. Those interviews are currently available for you to read on my website, but you might want to tune back in a few weeks from now for episode 21, where I'll be analyzing the highlights from those interviews as well as other lost Pokemon designs. If this episode contained any factual errors, I'll leave corrections and clarifications in this video's description, as well as a list of all my sources. I'd particularly like to thank the Cutting Room Floor Wiki, which is a great resource for information about internal data. And a big thanks to my Patreon supporters, who make this kind of research-heavy content possible. The YouTube algorithm punishes my channel for taking so long to produce these videos, so I ask that you please consider signing up to support the channel for a few bucks a month. It helps to make sure that I can continue translating historic interviews and producing videos just like this one. Okay, that about does it. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.